Okay, uh, this is question one from the 2020 solid mechanics exam. Um, it might just be worth taking a screenshot of the question paper if you don't have a copy of it, because uh, I'm going to move it out of the way now. Um, so this is largely a question which is really about uh, stress and strain. And so I'm just going to write down right at the top of the page, stress is uh, Young's modulus times strain. Stress is defined as force over area and uh, strain is change in length divided by length. I think those things are going to end up being useful. Um, the next thing to say, uh, we've got in part one, a cast iron tube worth just drawing the tube just to have the right picture in your own mind um, and we're told E equals 69 gigapascals 69 times 10 to the 9 pascals and the maximum allowable change in length is 0 0.025 percent um, There's just one tricky bit to do here. We have to think about um, strains and percentages. A uh, hundred percent change in length would be a strain of uh, well zero or one, depending on your point of view. Um, the, in fact, it would be one. The change in length uh, would equal uh, the uh, original length, so the strain would be one. Um, 1% would mean that the change in length was 1 100th of um, the original length. So 0.025% means epsilon equals 0.025 divided by 100, which equals, um, I think, 2.5 times 10 to the minus 4. Um, I'm reasonably happy with that. Just gonna check the maths on my calculator to make sure I got my powers of ten right. Uh, Two point five times ten to the minus four. Um, so that's the um, strain in the maximum strain that's allowable in the tube, and we can turn that into a maximum stress um, using um, stress is. Young's modulus times strain, which here equals 69 times 10 to the 9 multiplied by 2.5 times 10 to the minus 4, uh, which equals uh, 17.25 megapascals. And that's the answer for part 1. Just to make it clear, that's 17. Um, so that was, uh, sorry, that's only actually part 1a. Um, part 1b says if the load F equals 7.2 kilonewtons, I'll write that out as 7,200 newtons. Um, outside diameter equals 50 millimetres. That's 0 0.05 meters. And we know the maximum stress, sigma max equals 17.25 megapascals. And what we want to find is what's the inside diameter. Uh, well, stress is force over area, um, which means that the area equals force divided by stress, which is 7,200 divided by 17.25 times 10 to the 6 and that equals uh, 4.17 times 10 to the minus 4 square meters. Um, area equals pi times the outside diameter squared minus pi times the inside diameter squared. Uh, just drawing that out. The area we're interested in is the cross-sectional area of the tube and it's this area that I'm shading. 
on here. Um, we know the outside diameter. Uh, 4.17 times 10 to the minus 4 is the area. Is pi times 0 0.05 squared minus pi times inside diameter squared. And the inside diameter is what we want. That'll give us the wall thickness in the end. Uh, I'm just going to move on to the next page. Uh, keep that line in shot. That might just keep us clear on where we are. Um, so dividing both sides by pi uh, and moving things around a bit, a bit, I get that the inside diameter squared equals um, 0 0.05 squared minus 4.17 times 10 to the minus 4 over pi. Uh, yep, that's right. Which equals... Two point three seven times ten to the minus three, and the inside diameter then equals square root of that uh, zero point zero four eight six five meters. So just a bit less than zero point zero five meters. And in fact, I can just do a quick check that I haven't done anything wrong there. Area equals pi. Ah, I've just realised I have done something wrong. I've been working in um, with diameters, but of course I should have been working with radii. So let's just go back and correct that. Uh, this stage, that should be over 2, and that should be over 2, which means that should be over 2, and that should be over 2, that should be over 2, and uh, that should be over 2 like that. So if we try this again, uh, scribble out all of that lot, 0 0.05 divided by 2 squared minus 4.17 times 10 to the minus 4 uh, divided by pi. Now I'm getting a slightly different number here, 4.923 times 10 to the minus 4 uh, for that number there. And um, if I take the square root of that, I get uh, that the inside diameter divided by 2 is 0 0.022.18 meters. And if I double it, the inside diameter equals 0 0.04437 metres. Um, and I can just check uh, using my calculator that um, 0 0.05 divided by 2 uh, squared minus 0.04437 divided by 2 squared uh, times pi is 4.17 times 10 to the minus 4, which is the area I wanted. So using those diameters gets me the correct number. So finally, uh, let's just finish by drawing out a picture here of what we want. Uh, this value is um, 0.04437 meters. This value is 0.05 meters. And if this is W, then 0.05 equals 0.0437 plus 2W. Uh, sorry, that's 4437, like so. And finally, I can get 2, 2w equals 
5.63 times 10 to the minus 3 and W equals uh, 2.815 millimeters 2.815 times 10 to the minus 3 uh, I'll leave this 2.815 times 10 to the minus 3 meters which equals I'm going to say 2.8 millimeters to one decimal place and that's my answer for the wall thickness the minimum wall thickness which will give us uh, stress less than what we calculated was a limiting case um, okay that is part one done uh, part two let's have a look a block of 250 millimeters length and 50 by 40 cross section uh, not going to draw it correctly this is better so this length here is 250 millimeters which is 0.25 meters uh, that's 0.05 meters and that is 0.04 meters so that's all coming from the question uh, used to support concentric com uh, centric compressive load P and we know from the question that E equals 95 gigapascals 95 times 10 to the 9 pascals Okay, so the largest load that can be applied knowing the there are two conditions. Uh, condition one is that the maximum stress must be less than 80 megapascals. So P divided by the cross-sectional area, which is 0 0.05 times 0 0.04, must be less than 80 times 10 to the 6 which means P must be less than 160,000 newtons. Um, I multiply both sides by this number here. Uh, condition two says the um, change in length of the block should be at most 0.12% of its original length. So epsilon is less than 0.12%. Uh, 0.12%, remember, it's the same thing as before, as an absolute value, that's 0.12 divided by 100, which is 1.2 times 10 to the minus 3. Um, epsilon is uh, stress divided by Young's modulus um, which is or I guess maybe the thing to do here is find the stress that corresponds to that strain so it's Young's modulus time strain which is 95 times 10 to the 9 uh, pascals times 1.2 times 10 to the minus 3 and that equals one one four megapascals. Um, so we could go through and calculate a force exactly as before, but if we're breaking condition one, if we've got greater than uh, eighty megapascals, sorry, if if we're breaking condition two, we've already broken condition one. Um, so the largest load that can be applied is the one that breaks condition 1. Um, we can't go above 80 megapascals and we can't go above 114. The 114 doesn't really matter, it's the 80 that limits. So P max equals 160,000 newtons, I think. And I'm calling that my final answer on part 2. And finally, part three um, has this question um, with a bar 
I'll just draw it in two dimensions. My ability to draw it in three dimensions is going to be pretty weak. Uh, so this is 25 and that is 10. This is all in millimeters and that's 25 again. Uh, 50, 40, 40. And the depth into the page if we could see it, it would be five millimeters. Um, and then there's a force pulling outwards of 1.5 kilonewtons. And that means that uh, anywhere where I take a section in this object, I'll see 1.5 kilonewtons of force. Um, so I can call this region one, region two, and region three. Um, and in each case, what I'm going to need to do is work out the stress in that region and then turn that into a strain and then turn that into a change in length. And we'll do it for each region in turn. So region one, stress equals force over cross-sectional area. The area is um, what you would see if you looked along the line of the force. So it's this 25 multiplied by that 5. Um, and the force is 1500. So that's something I can put into my calculator. And that comes out to be 12 megapascals, I think. A strain then equals stress divided by Young's modulus. We're told in the question Young's modulus is 3.1 gigapascals. So this is 12 times 10 to the 6 divided by um, 3.1 times 10 to the 9, which comes out as 3.87 times 10 to the minus 3. And finally, delta x is going to be strain times original length, which is 3.87 times 10 to the minus 3 multiplied by the original length, which is 40 millimeters or 0.04 meters. And that comes out to be 1.55 times 10 to the minus 4 meters. Uh, okay, same for section two. I'll uh, rattle through this because it's all the same calculations. Stress is force over area, which is 1500 divided by 0 0.01 times 0 0.005, which is 30 megapascals. Strain is stress over Young's modulus, which is 30 megapascals divided by 3.1 times 10 to the 9, which is 9.6768 times 10 to the minus 3. And finally, change in length equals strain times original length which is 9.68 times 10 to the minus 3 multiplied by 0 0.05 and that equals 4.84 times 10 to the minus 4 meters. Um, region 3 I can just fit in at the bottom of the page. Uh, it's identical to region 1. It's got all the same dimensions and the same force applied, so we can say delta x equals 1.55 times 10 to the minus 4 meters. And just finishing that off then, we were asked for a total deformation And that equals delta x for section 1 plus delta x for section 2 plus delta x for section 3, region 1, region 2, region 3, which is 1.55 times 10 to the minus 4 
plus 4.84 times 10 to the minus 4 plus 1.55 times 10 to the minus 4 and when I add all of those up a mess of this on my calculator so I'll do it on here 1.55 times 10 to the minus 4 plus 4.84 times 10 to the minus 4 plus 1.55 times 10 to the minus 4 equals 7.94 times 10 to the minus 4 meters i.e. approximately 8 millimeters deformation Sorry, uh, 0.8 millimeters deformation. Um, but you could leave it at 7.94 times 10 to the minus 4 meters is a perfectly reasonable way to leave your answer, I think. Um, so that is how to do question one on that exam.